Welcome back to Barn Bill Feeders. This video is exciting for me because after installing our 12 valve Cummins, we now get to install our transmission. After doing a bunch of research and finding out manual Dodge transmissions don't hold up well to added power, it seemed the best common route was to go with a ZF6 out of a six liter power stroke. Since we made our own engine mount and using a non-Dodge transmission, we will also need to make our own custom transmission mount. To do this, we need to cut DOM tubing to size, cope the tube, tack it together in a jig, and finish welding it up. However, that isn't where the fun stops. We need to make mounts to mount it to the chassis, and unfortunately, cut some metal out of the cab to get the cab to sit over the transmission. The first step, we need to get the transmission hooked up to the back of the engine, which involves removing the cab. I grab my engine hoist with my cab removal tool and make quick work of it, and I get the transmission ready to be hoisted up. I first need to install the 12 valve ZF6 adapter plate prior to setting up the transmission. Since this is just for mock-up, I only use a few bolts to hold everything together. I can now hoist the transmission up and into position. Since I haven't touched this transmission for a few months, I don't remember exactly how to pick it up where it is nicely balanced. After a few tries, I found a spot where I'm comfortable to move forward. Setting the transmission between the frame rails was a bit tricky as there was just enough room to sneak the transmission between the cross member and the back of the engine. I got very lucky here. I then struggled a bit to get the transmission bolted to the back of the engine as it was at a slight angle and my engine hoist with some leakage kept lowering over time. Eventually I got it though. Now we are able to move into the fun stuff, fabricating the transmission mount. This consisted mostly of one inch by 120 wall DOM tubing. Where the bolts were installed into the transmission, this tube had a much thicker wall to make sure there was limited slop when installing the bolts. Unfortunately, I don't remember the tube diameter or the wall thickness here. My bandsaw made quick work of the material, but I keep running into occasionally snapping the blades, and this is exactly what happened here. Without a replacement blade on hand, I had to improvise and use my sawzall to keep moving forward with this project. The thick tube was a bit of a pain to cut, but this 120 wall tubing cut like butter. I then squared up the cuts on my sander and roll sanded the mill scale off. This worked surprisingly well, but it ruined my welding gloves by rubbing a hole through them. Anyone want to guess how I found the hole? I'll give you a guess. It was while I was welding. Off camera, I coped a piece of tube to connect to the tubing that houses the transmission bolts. I installed this tubing with bolts into the transmission and lightly tapped the cross brace into place, leveled it, and tacked it to keep it from moving. Once the welds cooled down, I removed them out, brought it to my bench, and fully welded it up. With that portion of the brace fully welded, I started to cope the rest of the tubes. Without having previously coped tubes before, nor the right equipment, this was a bit of a learning experience. At first, I tried to do the entire thing with just an angle grinder, which worked for the first piece, but then I thought of a better way. I took the pieces to the angle grinder, set the angle I wanted this piece to connect at, ground it flat at that angle, then brought it back to the vise and used an angle grinder to finish the cope. Although not the best method, it seemed to do a fine job. With the pieces cut and coped to size, we can now clean them up and install them into the jig to tack together. This jig keeps everything nice and square for assembly. I did realize I made this jig slightly wrong as if I had tacked them together like this, I wouldn't have been able to remove it from the jig. No worries, I hacked my other jig, used my square to keep everything aligned and made the two work together. I truly believe a 3D printer is an essential tool for your shop. It is probably one of my most frequently used tools. Unless the piece I am making is incredibly simple, I always design my part in CAD, 3D print it, and then test fit it and adjust as necessary before I even touch metal. I did this for this project too, but apparently I never filmed anything with my plastic mock-up part.
After fully welding up the mount and letting it cool, I dried the bushings into place, installed the crush sleeves, and then bolted up to the transmission. Now it is time to make the chassis mounts. Again, I modeled this all up and test fit it with 3D printed pieces before I even touched metal. I got these brackets cut out, cleaned up, and now ready to weld to the chassis. Some of these spots were very difficult to get both the torch and the filler in there to tack into place. Once I had a few tacks on each piece, I then started to remove the transmission so I had better access to weld these up. A few minutes later, I was ready to reinstall the transmission again. This time I knew where to hoist it from to best balance it and how to squeeze it into the chassis and the process went much easier. Lastly, it is time to get the cab back onto the chassis. Going into this, I knew I was going to need to cut the firewall and possibly some of the transmission tunnel. I measured the width of the adapter plate and made a square to cut out. Once the shifter was removed, we got the cab placed over the body mount only to find out more cutting was needed. I cut out the entirety of the trans tunnel and after a few back and forths with the sawzall trimming, I got the cab set back down into its place. Now the important steps, getting the shifter installed to see if it would hit the dash or where I think the seat would be. And lastly, installing my new bucket seat and shifting through the gears of course. The shifter location and throw is much better than the stock NP435. The throw is much shorter, which means slamming gears will be even easier. After I got done playing, I decided to throw on the front clip to make the truck a bit more complete and get ready for the next step in this project, compound turbos. Don't miss it, so be sure to subscribe Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.